Hi class, welcome to week two. Let's get started. Okay, here we go. We can go into the modules either way. We can enter this way through our little clipboard area or we can go right here. I'm going to just go into our little clipboard area and it will take you to the same place. All right, week two, generating ideas. This video will be kind of lengthy because I'm gonna go into details about the lesson. So uh, let's get started with the lesson. Lesson two. Okay, we want to refine the writing process this week. So last week, we began exploring the early stages of the writing process and developing foundational ideas for your first writing assignment. This week, we will consider the latter stages of the writing process, which are drafting and revising. In addition, we will work on your thesis statement. We will go over what's involved in creating a thesis statement. This will help you complete your essay for this week and provide additional skills to sharpen your writing. So our goals for this week, develop further understanding of the writing process learn strategies for organizing ideas and designing documents, practice improving clarity by refining sentences and paragraphs. And these are your skill spotlights. So we're gonna work on culture competency, communication, global awareness, and technology literacy. So, now we're going to refine the writing process. So basically we're going to talk about the things that we covered last week in addition to the things that we're going to cover this week. So last week's lesson provided an overview of the writing process. As a reminder, the steps in the writing process are as follows. You have discovering, planning, composing, getting feedback, revising, editing, and proofreading. So for each major assignment for this class, you will spend two weeks on that assignment. The first week will cover discovering, planning, and composing. The second week will cover getting feedback, revising, editing, and proofreading. So just know that each assignment will take two weeks to complete, okay? So let's keep going. So um, discovering, you will begin to think about things and try to understand the writing process. In this example, it tells you that you will begin to respond to an image. However, that assignment has been changed. You guys have been asked to do something a little different. You have been asked to respond to an event or a complication that you experience in the work place. So discovering, you will begin by reading the assignment description and understand that you will be writing in response to an event or complication you experience in the workplace. So make sure we have that understanding. You have thought about different events and which one you most like to write about. Maybe you aren't quite sure about the topic choice, but you got to narrow it down to two possibilities. To come to a final decision, 
you might try free writing about both of the events for 10 minutes. So free writing just means writing whatever comes to your mind about the topic for a set period of time. The only rule of free writing is that you must continue to write. Don't put the pen down or stop typing until your time is up. Okay, planning. So after free writing about your topic, you concluded that although both topics should make good essays, you prefer one over the other. So you've come up with some good ideas, but now it's time to start planning your essay. Going back to the assignment description, you notice the following suggestions, organizational structure. You agree that the structure seemed to make sense and decide to use it to become better in composing your essay. So composing, now that you're ready to start drafting, open up your APA essay template in the files and begin to work on your paper. Download a copy of the template and remember to save often. Let me take you back to the files section so that we can take you to the template that you need. I went over this last week, but I wanna make sure that you guys are absolutely sure of what is expected of you. So here we go. We're into our class composition, and this is the template, APA 7th edition student essay template. So you just go right into the template and make sure that you follow the template completely. Okay, so I'm going to go out of this and come back to our modules where we left off. I just want to make sure that you understood where to get that template, okay? So download a copy of that template and remember to save often. You want to take that template and write your information over it and save it as your own document. And that way you will be able to keep it and have it in the correct format. So you can begin at the beginning with the introduction, but you don't have to. Instead, you might prefer describing what is going on and then speculating about what is likely to happen next. It is often easier to write the introduction near the end of the process after you know what you are introducing. So it's okay. It's okay if you don't start with the introduction. Some people will get stuck because they're trying to come up with the best introduction. It's okay to go ahead and start your writing process and then come back and provide your introduction. So. If you find yourself getting stuck on one part of the essay, try going to a different part first and then coming back to that tricky part later. The trick is to keep writing, to keep the writing process going. So don't forget to give your paper an appropriate title. Okay, so now we're with we just review discovering, planning, and composing. And these are the three components that we took care of last week. So now this week, the second week is on revising and refining. So you're going to get some feedback in week two from your peers. I have divided you guys up into groups. Once you go into the discussion, there is a sheet that tells what group you are in. And the group leader is blue. 
the letters are blue. It was all done randomly. So you guys will work within that group to do your peer review. Your fellow students notice certain details about the event you had overlooked and also point out areas in your essay that could be more developed. Now, these are hypothetical situations trying to draw some attention to things that maybe just maybe may need improving. So at the same time, in reviewing the rough draft of two of your fellow students, you notice certain strategies they use and realize that they could be applied to your own writing. So you're learning from others. You're reviewing a paper and maybe you saw something that they did that could help you in your writing. So you're going to apply that to your writing. So as the process goes, be sure to regularly check the discussions for any feedback you have received. Not rise, revising. Upon rereading your rough draft and getting feedback from your fellow students and your professor, you realize that you overlooked certain key details in your example of the workplace event. In addition, you also notice that some parts of your essay, although is well written, really don't have support your thesis and need to be modified or deleted. So you want to make sure that you have unity. And if you have unity in your essay, every single word is related to your main idea, your thesis, what your paper is about. If it strays off into another subject, there's no place for it. You want to make sure everything is supporting your thesis statement. As you revise your essay, you're happy to see that this feedback has helped you to improve your writing. Okay, so editing. Time is running short. Soon it will be time to su submit your finished essay. Now is the time to edit and proofread. Read your essay out loud several times. Each time you read it, look for a specific kind of problem. For example, the first time you read, you may want to focus on sentence structure. And on the second go around, you may look at word choice and so on but make sure you let some time lapse in between the readings so that you can catch your errors. If you're reading it right away, as soon as you write it, you are anticipating words being there that may not be there. So make sure you let some time lapse between your different readings. So proofreading, before submitting your essay, Make sure everything is just right. Check that your essay is formatted according to APA 7th edition guidelines. And I just already showed you how to find that. Make sure you save the document as a Microsoft Word file or a PDF file, because those are the only files that can be uploaded into Canvas. So make sure you either have a Microsoft Word file or a PDF file. Okay, let's talk a little bit about your thesis statement. Essays generally begin with their attention getter to motivate the audience to continue reading. Most often, thesis statements come after the attention getter and conclude the opening paragraph. Simply put, the thesis statement is the main point of your entire essay, much as a topic sentence is the main point of a paragraph. An effective thesis consists of two main components, okay? Your topic and your opinion. 
For your descriptive analysis essay, you will be writing about an event or conflict in the workplace that had an impact on you. But to start, think about developing a thesis. Let's look at a simple case. So study the photo, study this photo right here, this little photo right here. And in the image, we can see a family walking with their dog through a field on a beautiful day. After describing what is happening in the image and speculating about what might happen next, we can begin to think about a thesis. And here are a few possibilities. This little activity right here, it tells you that this is a weak thesis, so you just look at it, and this is a better one, and this is a weak one, and this is a better one. So you go in and you look at the different theses, and you figure out what makes them good and what makes them bad. So the weak thesis statement hints at the topic, but both are simply statements of fact. The stronger thesis statements includes both a topic and an opinion about the topic. In addition, these statements interpret the image in a creative way by naming the dog or breed and the family as well. These thesis statements thus do a better job of setting the stage for the rest of the essay. So make sure you go ahead and look at those so you can be sure that you are selecting a strong thesis and not a weak thesis. So setting up your document, even before your audience begins to read your essay, they will begin to form a first impression based on the way the essay is formatted. Image is everything, you guys. I can't stress that enough. So you want to make sure that your essay includes uh, fonts that are easy to read. You want to make sure that you're not changing the style of your fonts. You want to make sure that your headings are located at the top and not the bottom of your document. Because if you don't, your first impression will not be a positive one. So APA provides a guide for crafting easily read and organized papers. So why not follow it? It's there for you. And this is the whole purpose of this class is for you guys to learn how to use this format. So there are some key differences between the seventh edition and the sixth edition of that APA format. So the seventh edition was just recently replaced in 2020. So make sure you are using the seventh edition. Okay, so I already showed you where the template is. And I just want to take a little time to just give you this little uh, explanation, this video that they're telling you about for APA. So just go ahead and listen to what they're saying. This video shows how to format a student essay according to APA's seventh edition guidelines. DeVry University officially adopted the seventh edition in the summer of 2020. So you will see some differences from what you may have been using with the sixth edition in the past. Overall, 7th edition simplifies rules for formatting essays and citing sources. Using the provided student essay template makes it easier still. First, save the template to your computer so that you can reuse it for all of your essay assignments. Then read all of the instructions in the template. Then go to File and Save As. Give your essay an appropriate title for your course and assignments. The next steps are simply to replace the template's written content with your own, while being careful to keep the format of the template. Let's look at the title page. You will notice that it has no title in the header, and the page number is already set. So let's begin with the actual title. 
which is centered and bold, about six double-spaced lines from the top of the page. I'm going to copy in my title from another document, but I'm going to paste it as text only so that I keep the format of my template. So I control C to copy and I right click and I paste with keep text only. There's my title. And then I'm going to type in my name. And then for your college department or program and your university, I'm going to type I'm going to remember that DeVry has a capital V. I'm proud of my school, so I'm going to make its name correct. My course, English 112, is composition, so I'm going to enter the code number of the course as well as the title so my reader knows exactly what course I'm talking about. For my professor name and title, I'm going to go ahead and write in. Professor McNerney and PhD is your title. Finally, the date with the full word for the month, the day of the month, and the four digit year. There's my complete title page. Doesn't it look nice? Then I can scroll down to my second page. I don't need to hit enter, the paging is already set up. And I have this same title, centered, bold, and title case here. So I'm going to go ahead and copy again and paste it from my other document as text only. Oh, look, this needs to be pushed back down to the next line. The next step is to replace all of the instructional text with my own. I'm going to carefully select all of the instructions, which I read carefully, of course, and delete them. I don't want to delete the references page because I will need that. Just the text of the instructions. That's where my body paragraphs are going to go. Now I've already drafted some of my essay, so I'm gonna copy that from my other document and paste it in here. Again, as text only. Oh boy, look, it turned out bold. So I'm going to select that, turn off the bold, and I also want to indent the first line of each paragraph. So this is my introduction, ending with my thesis, and then my first body paragraph. I'm not finished yet, so I'll have to come back and finish drafting, but I do want to go down to my references page. It's already set up with the title, centered and bold on the first line of the page after my essay. It has four different models of the most common kinds of citations. It's never too early to start filling in sources. I don't want to forget what came from which source. So I will type in my in-text citations as I draft, and I will add each source to the references page as soon as I use it and cited in the body. Notice that the reference page has several model entries. The first is for a journal article with a DOI. That's a digital object identifier. The second has no DOI, but I've included the permalink that's provided by the library database. The third source models how to cite a source with multiple authors. Notice that I list them, author's last name, initial, initial, all of the authors separated by commas, and then an ampersand before the last author. The last source is an article from the open internet. This might be a newspaper article or a magazine article. And I've included the URL from exactly where I found this article. I'm gonna go ahead and paste in my first source citation, which I've already written out.
notice in the ruler that it's set for a hanging indent. That means the first line is on the left margin and all the other lines of this citation are going to wrap in to that half inch mark. If my hanging indent isn't already set, I can always select the text and control T and it will automatically set it for me. That's it. I'm ready to go back to continue drafting my essay. However, I'm going to save just to make sure I don't lose anything. Okay, and that's it. So let me get back to where we were. All right, so that's some very important stuff for you, but I wanna let you know you do not have to use research for this particular document, but it's always good to know. So when uh, you have to use research, you will know how to cite it properly, okay? And you were not asked to use research, but if you do use research, make sure you cite it properly. Okay, here's the writing lab for word of choices. And it's just a little uh, exercise to just help, just get the exercise really, really under your belt. So just go ahead and read exactly what it's telling you to do. And it tells you to read the sentence and then give your answer. And you can check to see if your answer is correct or if it's not correct. And the same here, these are just little exercises for you. This is talking in slang. You don't want to talk in slang. You want to be uh, more concise and use clear sentences. So go ahead and play around with that. But now we want to uh, connect your assignment. Let's connect the descriptive analysis assignment. So planning paragraphs. This week, you will transform your pre-writing from week one into a draft of your paper to prepare for your peer review and this week's discussion. One of the key things to focus on as you build your draft is to structure your ideas. In other words, you want to take extra care designing your paragraphs for clarity and logical progression of your ideas. So as you begin to structure your essay, each paragraph should include the following. You should have a topic sentence. What is the main idea of the paragraph? Tell the audience what the paragraph will be about introduce an idea rather than a fact or example. And next, you want to have an explanation. What do your readers need to know? Provide any background or descriptive information that may be necessary for your readers to understand the significance of the main idea of the paragraph. Okay, then you want evidence. What examples illustrates this? Give concrete evidence and specific details to illustrate the main idea of the paragraph. And now analysis. Why is this important? Explain how the examples show the significance of the main idea. And then you have your conclusion and transitions. How does this idea connect to the rest of the paper? Summarize the paragraph's main idea and move fluently to the next paragraph and ideas. So use the sample paragraph structure as a model for your body paragraphs as you complete your drafts. Now let's talk a little bit about your thesis. So here are some ideas for revising your thesis. So basically, what you want to do before you post your draft for review, you should also spend time working on your thesis statement for the essay. Remember, a thesis statement introduces the topic of your opinion 
of the topic. In the case of the descriptive analysis essay, your thesis should explain your topic. In this case, the professional event or conflict you have selected and your opinion or what you learned from the experience. So make sure that your thesis statement is the case of the professional event or conflict you have selected and your opinion of what you've learned from the experience. Once you have started drafting your essay, think about your thesis. You may need to develop and adjust your thesis as your ideas change and grow. To get started, study your work and consider the following questions to help develop your thesis statement. Do you clearly state your topic? Do you explain your opinion? How can you make your point clearer? Your thesis should be the final sentence of your introduction. Be sure to place your thesis statement correctly and use it as a guide for revising your draft, okay? So next, we're going to go right into the peer review assignment. Okay, this is the peer review assignment. And in this assignment, this is what you need to do. In your initial post, your initial response post, Post a rough draft of at least the first page, more is, if possible, of your descriptive analysis essay, no later than Tuesday, okay? You want to provide feedback to at least two of your fellow team members by no later than Friday so that you and your fellow students have an opportunity to incorporate that feedback into your final submission. Scroll through the initial posts of your fellow students. Prioritize responding to students who have not received any feedback yet. If anyone has received at least one response, then respond to the student who has received the fewest responses and so on. And this is important because you want to make sure that everyone is not responding to one person. Look for the people who have not been responded to and respond to them. That's basically what it's telling you. So in each response to your peers, be sure to answer the following questions in complete sentences. So these are the questions, read them and make sure that you respond in complete sentences, okay? And this is your group right here. So once you go in here, you will be able to make the window bigger and you have a chance to see all of the groups. So you're, you'll be able to see them, you'll be able to visually see them. And if not, let me know and I will send it out to all students. As a matter of fact, I think I will email it to all students and then I can be sure that all students have the list that they need so they know which group they're in. I will send that out tonight. Okay, so you must go into the book and read chapter two. So I wanna come down here to our book and I think it may be in the resources. It is. Um, okay, that's week one. I guess if it opens, I can get to it. There it is. Okay, this is the book. So I told you guys, you just click on that. I got an email from someone who said that they were really new 
and they didn't know what to do. They had not had an online class before. So I'm giving a little more instructions. Hopefully I can help someone who is confused about how to find things. So we want to go to chapter two. So like I told you before, go into these little lines and that will open up your table of contents. And we want to go in chapter two. So in order to go in chapter two, we wanna come down here and I think chapter two may be in part one and it is. So we go to part one, chapter two, the writing process. Okay, so this little arrow says, go to chapter two, the writing process. So that's what we're going to do. We're in chapter two, the writing process. And you guys read the entire chapter. And after you read the entire chapter, then you go back and you do the publication little quizzes that they have set out for you to do. Now, I want to go back to where we were. So I'm going to get out of the book and I'm going to, if it lets me. <laughs> okay, I got all of my twos coming up trying to tell me um, which way to go. But let me just get to it. I can get to it. Yeah, if the tool just get out of the way. Okay, it's out of the way now. All right, so I wanna leave the book and I wanna go back to your module so we can continue. Because you know that you have to read chapter two. Now, here are some exercises because we were right here. This is where we were. I'm gonna go back to this. This was your peer review and remind me to send that. I will send you the list. So what these are, you guys may be familiar with them because you did it for week one. They're little writing exercises that are from the publisher of your book. So you go into the little writing exercise and you actually do the questions. They are multiple choice questions. And once you start it, uh, you can go out of it and come back if you want. So I'm going to preview it just so I can show you guys how to work the function. So uh, the test comes up and then you just start with the questions or start with the reading. If you haven't read, then you can start with the reading now and it will pull up the chapter. If you already read, you can start with the questions. Okay, so it's, it's telling you some little instruction. So you have 20 concepts to complete. That does not mean you have 20 questions. One concept may take five different questions. So just make sure that you pay attention to the questions and getting them right. And if you don't get them right, you can read the concept and try again. So this one, it says, which of the following statements about the writing process are true? Select all that apply. So the writing process will be the same each time you write. Writing can be a messy process. Each person needs to find his or his own approach to the steps of the writing process. The steps of the writing process need to be followed in order. So they want to know which are true. I'm going to take a stab at it. I know they don't, the writing steps don't have to be followed in order. So I'm not going to click that because you can write in any order that you want. Your final draft will have order, but the process, you can start with the body and then come back and write your introduction. So each person needs to find his own approach to the steps of the writing process, true. Writing can be a messy process. That's true, but I don't know if that's actually in the book. And then the writing process will be the same each time you write. That, the, the process may not be the same each time you write. So we don't wanna check that. So let's see, did I get them correct or, or did not? 
if I didn't get it correct, well, let's look and read about the uh, process. So it goes right here to the writing process. So the key concepts are highlighted. So after you have analyzed your rhetorical star and get a good sense of what you need to do, then it's time to start the writing process. So this tells you everything, the seven steps of the writing process, here they are. And then it says, learn, learning to apply these seven steps will help you find the method that works best for you. So there is no set method, it's the one that works best for you. So writing can be a messy process. That was one of the questions. Is it a messy process? Writing can be a messy process. So you won't always follow all of the steps in sequence. So there, I think that kind of answers the question. So let's go back and let's see. We got this. Let, let, let's see. I think I did them correctly. I'm not sure, but it's a high chance that I did. Let's see. Do we get them all? Yeah. It tells you up here. They're all correct. And it tells you the correct answers down here. And then you proceed to the next question. And you see just a half of a bar was completed. So you just keep with these questions and the answer in them until you have completed the process. But I want to let you guys know that if you get one wrong, it's going to keep giving it to you over and over different times so that they can be sure that you are grasping the material. So hang in there. It may take a while. I did the assignment so I could see what you guys were up against. Because like I told you, this is a new part of the class of these publisher tests. So uh, I went through it to make sure that I can give you guys some good advice. So hang in there. It's long. It takes a, a good amount of time, but you can do it as many times as you like without any penalties. And once you get it completed, you will receive the points. Uh, look into your grades and you will be able to see the points are there. So this is another assignment right here, editing words. Uh, the last one for editing words, it wasn't that big of a deal. It was a, a small assignment. So go ahead and make sure that you complete the assignment. It's the same way you load it into a different window and go through the same particulars that I went through. And this is exactly where you submit your essay. So you're going to submit your essay in week two. And here are all of your rubrics that you need, the criteria to make sure that you have done all of these things to get your total points of 100. So I think that just about concludes our assignment for this week. So make sure that you review this information yourself. Make sure that you haven't missed out on anything. And then our final thing for the week, every week you have this anonymous survey to do. So just make sure that you complete that survey. And uh, actually I'm gonna stop sharing my screen because I think that's just about it. So if you have any questions, please make sure that you contact me. My office hours are on Wednesday from 4 to 6 p.m. But for this week, to make sure that you guys are supported, I'm going to change my office hours to Monday, the day after, tomorrow, depending on when you're watching this, I'm recording this Saturday. So uh, Sunday will be when your assignments are due. So I figure Monday, if you have any questions about your descriptive analysis essay, please drop in for my office hours between 4 and 6 p.m. Monday for this week. I will have them on Monday. They're normally on Wednesday, but I will have them on Monday from 4 to 6. So I will send out a notice, a reminder, to let you know that I'm going to change the day from Wednesday to Monday to make sure that you guys tune in. 
And if you have any questions, bring your questions with you. Um, just drop in, say hi, what have you. I'll be there waiting for you to assist you and help you in any way that I can. So take care, you guys. Have a great day. And I'm sorry for taking so long, but I want to make sure that you are completely supported. So once again, bye and have a great day.